So what we got here is a forehand and Wadsworth model 38, number 38. When this gun came to me, it was not in this condition. So uh, this is a finished condition, uh, refinished condition. Uh, we'll go ahead and get things set up to show you what all has been done to this guy. All right, so hang on here. All right, so here we've got it mostly disassembled. Uh, this little guy we actually couldn't get parts for. What we ended up doing was getting a uh, another of the same model. Uh, Again, forehand Wadsworth double action number 38. Uh, this is the uh, parts gun and needed the hammer, hammer spring, main spring, the lever spring, the trigger return spring, uh, I think, and the front sight. I think that was about it. Uh, with the hammer, the thing about these guys uh, being produced around the turn of the last century uh, when everything was done by hand, even though they're the same model, uh, the dimensions of the locations of the internals are different. So it's not like you can just drop a part in and be done. Uh, so what we had to do with the hammer, modify uh, the angle of uh, the back of the hammer spur so it could cock all the way. We also had to adjust the arc on the bottom uh, so that it would rotate. Essentially every single functioning surface on all of these parts had to be modified. Uh, I had to modify the lever here for the uh, double action process. So this is the uh, safety and had to modify the surface here had to build up here and alter that so it would work in conjunction the trigger we had to extend the lip here so it would actually interact with the hammer had to do a weld build up here and refit that for the cylinder lockup had to adjust the inside uh, where it comes around in the trigger guard also had to adjust the bottom of the trigger so it would fit. On the lever, we had to modify the back of the lever uh, and then do actually a little bit of weld build up on the tip so that it could uh, cycle the cylinder. We even had to modify the spring here just a little bit on the top and the bottom so that it would fit inside. Uh, we recut these guys um, just by hand filing to uh, get them and it was really marred when it had been trying to be pulled out and then pulled the front side out and installed that one in this parts gun or from the parts gun in the new gun and polished the little lock here so um, lots of putting together and taking apart and putting back together and we also had to Alter that just a touch for the new lever. So let's get this guy slapped together and see how awesome it works now, right? So after all of the filing and fitting everything, getting everything to function reliably, then we reheat treated all the internals. Uh, the trigger, the lever, the uh, safety, the hammer spur, uh, hammer itself, and the double action lever. Uh, everything has been re case hardened so that when they are uh, operating running against each other uh, they won't cause galling and binding
function single action All right you got double action and you can see the cylinder coming all the way around and single action goes into cylinder locks up cylinder cycles all the way around and you can see the safety half cock So the gun is finally fully functional again. Uh, it does not shoot modern uh, powders uh, or modern 38s. It's an obsolete 38 black powder load here. Uh, but it was a cool little project. Uh, lots, lots of work. Lots of filing and fitting and refitting and modifying and going back to the drawing board and thinking things through make sure that all the parts worked and then huh, celebration when they did it's like all right let's get these suckers hardened so it'll be good to go um, hopefully the client will be very pleased well he will be very pleased so there you go nice little video about uh, some crazy stuff here uh, y'all have a good one Thanks for coming by.